Welcome back. In today's video, I'm jumping into something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is looking at two upcoming GNOME-based distributions of Linux. They're the most popular out there, Ubuntu and Fedora. Yes, there's plenty of other distros we could talk about, but these two are both having releases as of October of 2022. And as of the time of recording of this video, quick disclaimer, I'm running the up-to-date beta versions of these releases. Now, both the release notes of these releases seem to indicate that there's not going to be too much that is going to visibly change between now and final release. And by the time the video comes out, we are going to be looking at basically the final release. So within days of each of these distros getting released, I thought it'd be a great idea to jump in and start comparing where these two are headed. But before we do, it's worth asking yourself the same question. Where are you headed? One of the best indicators of where you're headed is what you read. I've had a goal for many years to read about a dozen books a year and coming up with a curated list of the books that I want to read as well as getting to those books is where today's sponsor, Shortform, comes in. Shortform is an online platform that creates comprehensive summaries and guides to some of the best nonfiction books in circulation today. And it's not just summarizing books, they also provide contextual notes and articles and links to similar books and authors to provide really key insights and help you understand that author's work even better. Now, they've got a bunch of genres to choose from, including productivity, technology, biographies, just to name a few. And lately, what I've been doing is using the summaries to review key ideas from books that I've read in the past, like Cal Newport's brilliant deep work. Now, not only does Shortform have a really excellent detailed summary of that book that I can knock over in about 30 minutes or so, but I've also been able to find the next book on my list, Mahai Chixen Mahai's Flow, which dives deeper into one of the key takeaways of deep work, which is why challenging work feeds our sense of purpose and satisfaction so well. Now, Shortform is constantly expanding and subscribers get to vote on what books are covered next. So the possibilities here just keep opening up with what you can learn from this platform. So to get five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription, join Shortform through the special link shortform.com slash galactic or click in the link in the description. Basically, you're gonna get access to thousands of the best books and ideas for the price of one book a month. So learn more than ever from Shortform and special thanks to Shortform for sponsoring today's episode. All right, so comparing Ubuntu 22.10 with Fedora 37. Now I did this about two years ago. In fact, pretty much spot on two years ago. And you can go back and have a look at that video as well to get a bit of an idea of where my pre-existing opinions on the matter sit. But things have changed uh, ever so slightly, but it shows an indication of different directions for these distributions as they grapple with how to handle the GNOME updates. Now, obviously, Fedora, as we all know, is uh, comes from a long history of using the default stock GNOME as it was envisioned by the GNOME team. And with Fedora 37, we have GNOME version 43. Now, GNOME 43 doesn't have sort of too much wild change to it, but this quick settings panel up in the top is going to be the one that people talk about the most because of the fact it's the most visible change. And it is a nice change, and both Ubuntu and Fedora use this uh, quick settings layout, although Ubuntu does throw a few extra things in there as Ubuntu is inclined to do. Uh, but in terms of the overall presentation of these two distributions, I got to say, like, the, the default Advaita theme that is present on Fedora and any stock GNOME release is looking better. I mean, you look at what Advaita looked like literally two years ago, and it looked a lot worse than this. Now, also, GTK4 continues to make leaps and bounds with the both the scalability of Windows in that how the Windows respond to, uh, to being resized and also how smooth the animations are. This is gonna be a really subtle one, and I'll try and zoom in so you can kind of get a really good look at this, but you'll notice even the fade in, fade out of different selections of the, um, of the file manager, the way that it's highlighted, you can kind of, it's a very subtle effect, 
but it gives you uh, a really nice uh, like halo around the selected item. The, and these are just little snippets of larger work that, that has gone into GTK4 and making GTK4 apps more fluid and animated and just lovely. Now on Ubuntu side of things, which we'll have a look at shortly, while all of these changes don't all necessarily land at the same time because Fedora uses upstream GNOME, whereas Ubuntu uh, even though it is on pretty much the same release schedule now of the main GNOME release, it does have some of the, uh, they, they're a little bit more selective with which apps they want to roll over to the GTK4 version. So where, where possible, Fedora tends to include those as quickly as possible. Whereas on the Ubuntu thing, side of things, we tend to see more features, but a little bit more conservative approach when it comes to implementing the latest and greatest software. Now, most of you, I'm going to, I'm going to assume, already have a preference between these two systems. Maybe the reason you clicked on this video is just wanting to see where these two are at and whether or not your pre-existing opinions about the distribution should be changed at all. And in my opinion, I think I'm starting to notice a small, ever so slightly small uh, difference in how I thought about this as I, from what I did two years ago. Two years ago, I kind of gave the argument that if you wanted to have the latest and greatest in the open source world, then you needed to be running Fedora. If you wanted it to be stable, if you wanted it to be well tested and, uh, and you wanted to have the latest, Fedora was a great place to go. This is, of course, discounting the wonderful uh, rolling releases that exist in the world. But if you wanted a more user centric uh, approach, as in one that is going to suit regular people more often, then my advice was to go and check out Ubuntu. And also, if you wanted stability out of Ubuntu, then you were going to have to go and dig up the LTS release as opposed to these interim releases. Now, my opinion on this is kind of changing in that I think the polish that I'm seeing go into the Ubuntu desktop seems better than what it was two years ago. Now, granted, I did not actually give Ubuntu 22.04 that much of a run. Uh, I quickly checked it out, had a look at the main thing. I didn't actually ever install it as my own distro. Um, I just kind of moved on. So it was really interesting to see some of the changes and polish that had gone into the Ubuntu desktop and its interpretation since the GNOME 40 series. So here we are a few iterations into GNOME 40 and on Fedora, GNOME 40 looks great. Now, when it comes to what has actually changed in Fedora in terms of 37 under the hood and all that kind of thing, honestly, there's not that much. I mean, when you go actually to the release page of the Fedora 37 beta, they really don't highlight much at all. It's literally like GNOME 43, you're welcome, move on, and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, now, what is interesting to me is that while GNOME 43 continues to be a polished, if not iterative, uh, update to the desktop environment, what I like to see is the fact that the Ubuntu team are starting to apply a bit of their special source back to replicate some of the features that the Ubuntu desktop held while it was in its Unity phase. And that is what I want to talk about next. So the default desktop of Ubuntu 22.10 seems to me to have a lot more visual panache than the default GNOME desktop. Now, for those who are well entrenched in their workflow habits, it doesn't matter what any of this stuff looks like because we know we can change it and we're going to change it to what we want. But both of these distributions, Ubuntu and Fedora, share a very special role by being, more often than not, one of the first distributions that new users try or the desktop that a lot of organizations and offices move to when adopting a free and open source desktop, mostly because of their ties to a heavily supported ecosystem of documentation and updates and security from Red Hat in the case of Fedora and from Canonical in the case of Ubuntu. What I want to point out here is that as a desktop experience, I think Ubuntu might be starting to get some of its mojo back. Now, I'm not wanting to take anything away from the Fedora project. I still love it and it's still a great distribution on technical reasons for several reasons. But in terms of a desktop use distribution, 
But this release of Ubuntu and its predecessor both, both give me this feeling that maybe Ubuntu might be starting to implement some of the features that it lost in the move to GNOME. What do I mean by this? Well, for starters, when it comes to the GNOME desktop and how much flexibility you have over customizing it, you don't just have a light and dark theme like you do on the default GNOME desktop. You also have accent colors that have been there since the last release. And these accent colors are holistic, not just to the icons and the highlight colors within Advator itself, but also the GNOME shell, which wasn't always the case, at least in my experience prior to Ubuntu 22.04. So being able to come in here as a average user, select an accent color in a wallpaper, all of which are very pretty, I might add, is a nice touch of usability on top of what GNOME gives you. Also, some of the features that they have tied in here with the main settings regarding the dock usually gives enough flexibility for most people to customize this desktop to what they want in that we can auto hide the dock if we want to, we can uh, display it, we can choose where we want to put it on the screen, left, bottom or right, and we can configure the dock behavior by including whether we want network drives or mounted drives in there. And also, we now have the ability, thanks to a very nice uh, feature request, I guess, by uh, by Joey Sneddon over at OMG Ubuntu, we now get this nice window spread mode when we have multiple windows of the same app open and we select it on the dock. This is a feature that Unity Desktop did have back in the day, and uh, it was a sore point for a lot of users that that was no longer the default behavior. Now, one thing that I will add is that I wish the default behavior included minimizing if you clicked on the icon on the dock of a window that was already open, but maybe we'll get there. It'd be great to see that as a toggle that you could enable here. Uh, maybe that's something we can add next time around. But the fact that we have these little inclusions now is a sign that we're heading in the right direction. Now, I am a little bit sore about the fact that we no longer have the dark header bars that have been gone now for a couple of Ubuntu releases. This is due to how difficult theming Adwaiter is. Uh, but nevertheless, the design team, specifically with the dark mode, just have knocked it out of the park with still making this desktop look good. And I've got to say, just as a surface level visual polish side of things, the icon set and the wallpaper and the fonts do wonders to make this desktop appeal to more average users. Now, if you don't like the way that Ubuntu does things, for example, likes to use snaps on things like Firefox out of the box, then that hasn't changed. And that might be reason enough for you to use Fedora or whatever distro you're already using. But where Fedora used to differentiate itself by being the latest and greatest in the open source community boiled into a user-friendly desktop distribution, I feel like Ubuntu is starting to sneak back into that territory. Back when, back two years ago, when I made this exact same video, I was talking about the fact that Ubuntu lagged behind when it came to GNOME releases, Wayland fixes, Linux kernel, adoption of newer audio technologies, etc., etc. And here we are, two years later, and we have pretty much the same version of GNOME, albeit there's a few little bits and pieces that aren't all at version 43, but still it's a pretty darn good effort. And we have Pipewire with all of its latest fixes installed on both Fedora and Ubuntu. We have the latest fixes enabled for Wayland. We have the latest Linux kernel, like literally 5.19 on both. And we have a more polished visual experience on Ubuntu, I would argue, than the default GNOME 43. All of this amounts to a recommendation that I didn't see myself giving a year or two ago. And that is actually Ubuntu's not looking bad at all at this point. And yes, the argument still stands. If you need long-term support and all that good stuff, go install the LTS. But if you're like me and you enjoy looking at what the latest and greatest in the open source world is on some of the biggest names in the desktop Linux world, Fedora and Ubuntu is about as good as it gets. And I think this time around, I feel like Ubuntu has come out swinging. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, what would be a change that Ubuntu could make to keep this trajectory going? And 50 cents for everyone who says, get rid of Snap. I'd be very wealthy. See you all in the next one.